everybody, welcome to another episode of On the Paint Table. It's my weekly show where you see what I got done and what I'm working on and what is coming up. So obviously, as the videos today probably suggest, today has been uh, fairly dominated. This week has been fairly dominated by getting Kill Team into the dark painted. It also had me go and dig through all my bits boxes and find other projects related to what was coming out this week because I'm very excited to play Kill Team on board spaceships. Um, and I got to play two games with Jay this week as well. He painted up the Navy Breachers, so I'm sure you can check out his blog and his um, Twitter, and he'll be posting pictures of those. But I painted up the Crute and the Galadark itself, which was a lot of what comes in this box. I mean, most of what comes in this box is the Galadark. So I used my double rattle can method. I'm going to link literally the exact same paint method um, in the cards up here, and I used it for the Kill Team Terrain. Um, actually, it was the it, it was Kill Team Terrain, but it was also the um, the Frontierist Terrain from 40K. It's literally the same painting method. So if you if you want to do the, if you want to copy this, it's exactly the same. The blue I used though, I grabbed the rattle can for it. I actually finished the can of the brown I used um, and chucked it and can't find it anywhere. So I'll just name it in the video. It's Espresso from Rust Oleum Painters Touch. Available in the U.S. I don't know if you can get it in the U.K. or the rest of the world, but U.S. and Canada, you can definitely get it. Um, yeah, and I dug out some other stuff that's related to this week. Uh, I found my Kill Team Rogue Trader box, which I found like in a dusty corner of my buddy's game shop and was like, are you going to do something with this? And he's like, no. And so I grabbed it. And also another really cool Kill Team, I think, for Into the Dark, which is, of course, the original Orc team, the Orc Commandos, uh, from the first 2021 Kill Team box, the Octarius box. So let's take a look at the Galadark train. I'll go through how I painted it um, briefly, but the core mechanics of all of this, you can check out the painting video for the Sector Frontierist train, and it's basically the same. It is Kill Team Into the Dark painted up this week. Um, all of the wall sections and conveniently organized all the caps and pillars and ancient machinery and barricades um, all fit into one of these. I, I, don't, I can't remember, I think it's a Walmart tote. Yeah, it's a Walmart tote. They're like A1 or something one. Totes, it was like eight bucks and it conveniently, these things are perfect because they fit at like a kill zone basically perfectly of terrain. And it means I can store it and not have it get all dinged up and have to, have to put it back in the box and stuff too. So I just figured because it's all in pieces, this was actually the easiest way to show you guys how it's all done. Um, the metallic stuff I actually primed separately. So it was two primers. The first one for all this stuff and you can actually see the fade up close here. It's a Rust-Oleum Espresso Painter's Touch uh, Brown Primer, and then just a 45 degree angle with this right here, the chalked, um, I'm sorry, it's in French there, people. Uh, this is Canadian, two language packaging, right? Um, chalked uh, Coastal Blue, uh, done at a 45 degree angle to give it that fade. Then the whole thing is dry brushed with Longbeard Gray. People make fun of me for um, using Citadel paints on terrain, but that Longbeard Gray dry paint is from like eight years ago, and it's still going. You don't need a lot of it to dry brush with, and the nice thing is you can't screw up the dry brushing with it because it comes out as a gel, um, and I just find it's really consistent. So I I like them. I really like the dry paints. The one pot of it seems to go a really long way. So I don't have any problem. It doesn't it does, like everyone's like just use craft paints for the dollar store. And I'm like, well, yeah, but then the consistency for dry brushing isn't per, like isn't as easy. When you try to get through tons of terrain, a, a little bit of convenience is worth the like extra you know five bucks a paint or whatever if that paint's gonna last you a couple of years. Um, I also did prime it with the doors in, right? I actually primed it with the doors open like that. So you can see here, there's a bit of the, the, the rusty brown is all around the door frame there. And then the 45 degree angle, I actually closed it up and that kept the brown around the door frame because I felt that felt right that there was like grime and grease inside the door um, when I did the priming. Uh, and then the metallic parts were all actually done. This is the uh, Citadel um lead belcher and then i or sorry it's the brown first and then i did the 45 degree lead belcher so i kept all the rust and stuff like that um but that espresso browns underneath and that gives it like that brownie base tone that ties all the train together and then just a 45 degree angled lead belcher one i've got some of the rust-oleum metallics they just <laughs> the consistency is really oily and they speckle really easily so i i i really do like the um, lead belcher spray, or maybe it's iron warriors. No, it's lead belcher. I think whatever the metallic silver spray is from Citadel. I think it's it's nice and consistent. And when you're doing like a top coat, same with this chalk paint, it's nice and consistent. Um, I'd rather have something I know exactly how it's going to go on um, than save a couple bucks sometimes. And I don't experiment. Like that's I, I I love walking by the spray paint wall and grabbing new <laughs> new colors and stuff. Um, and then the details were painted. So what I did was I actually thinned down. You can see here for like the grime streaking and stuff like that. I don't like to use like expensive streaking stuff like like um, military modeling kits and stuff for that. I actually just go to Michaels and I grab the golden high flow paints and I'll thin them down. So it's just like a raw umber. 
I wash all the metallic bits. I gave them all a dry brush first. Sorry, I should have mentioned. A base coat and a dry brush, so. I've got Sybarite green on all the cabling there. Uh, desert yellow for the skulls. I just did black for the screens. A little bit of, um, I think it's Gehenna gold for the, the metallics. And then gave everything a nice brown wash um, with like a burnt sepia uh, wash. And then picked up the details. So like a little bit of extra red for the, the lenses and the computers. A little bit of white. Um, it's actually Hoth blue or Hoth, I think it's Hoth blue. Yeah, with um, Screaming Skull over top for the lights. Uh, I did a few different colors of lights actually. You can see for like the, there's whenever there's a door sometimes there's like, um, you can see there's some more lights there, different types of lights. Uh, there's like a big bank of screens and stuff too on one of these. You can see I did the black up through red, just like they're like emergency screens or like low light screens because they're on low power. Um, and then I picked up all the batteries too because there's these big walls of batteries I think are really cool because the machines can actually run. I just did the interior of the batteries with some gray to make them pop. Um, that blue on all the electrical stuff is actually, I think it's Signar blue. It's one of the um, like bright, bright, bright Signar P3 paints that I washed down and just kind of put in the recesses. Oh, here we go. Some, if you want to see some lights, I just did different color lights sometimes. So if it's like an on off kind of light or like a danger switch light, I do it in different colors. Um, and yeah, and there's, and like the details are pretty consistent across. Like I used the same palette of colors for everything and I just production lined it. So I did all the walls. I did all the ancient machinery, and when I was finally done, I thinned down some Mornfang brown uh, with some water and some gloss varnish. And that's my final step, as I do like rust marking. So I'll just paint like this really thin, runny, almost like uh, melted ice cream, orangey brown into some recesses, and then just let it sit. Like let it sit until it's good and dry, probably like an hour, um, just to make sure that it's dried completely. And that gives you that kind of like nice pooled rust. So the, the raw, the, is it burnt sepia or raw? Yeah, burnt sepia romper. It, it, take your pick, it depends on what you're putting it over top of. I think this one was um, burnt sepia. Uh, gives it sort of like a nice tonal shift. It ties all the colors together and makes them look grimy. And then that rust is kind of like the last little detail I put on all the metallics and have like rest in the recesses. Like it's just corrosion that's like accruing. And I'm pretty happy with it. It turned out great. It was probably a solid eight hours of painting and eight hours of building. So it's probably two days to get all this done because it is pretty convoluted to build. Um, and pay attention to the instructions. Don't glue things. My son uh, almost glued a couple of caps on. I had to rip them, <laughs> rip them off of these because um, he was helping me. He was sitting next to me and he was just like, well, this looks like it goes together. And normally he'd be completely right. And there was a couple moments where I had to like pry some stuff off afterwards, but it didn't, it didn't affect anything. Actually, these ones go on easier. If you watch my other video, my review for the walls, these go on easier than the ones that I pry. I'm just too ironically when it was all said and done. Um, so that's the Gallagher Trans itself for the building and painting. And then I did the croup. Uh, these guys were also primed with that Espresso Brown Primer. Uh, and then I hit them with a leather brown army painter, like just like Zenithal. Uh, and then most of the rest of it was with contrast paints. So I used Rattling Grime for all the quills. Uh, oh geez, it's like a Nurgle color for, oh no, it's the, actually it's not, it's the, um, it's the orc one, the Cruel Boys green I used for the skin and then just blended up. I, I used the same paints, uh, blended up, it's uh, Flesh Terror for the cloaks and then blended everything up afterwards. So uh, brought a little bit of, I think it's just the Wraith Bone into the paints, um, into like the contrast paints, use the contrast paints to thin them and that tints them the same sort of like tone and then just hide them up afterwards. Nice and easy. I think I did the actual crew probably in like maybe four or five hours. You know, I'm just doing quick and dirty kill team paint jobs here. Um, and then the bases are actually just astrogranite debris. I washed a little bit of, um, oh geez, what is it called? It used to be called Lich Purple. Whatever Lich Purple is now, this is again, this is me traveling through time and not knowing what anything's called anymore. Um, into the middles there, and then just tease it out from the center to give them that purple shadow. I thought that'd be cool for like the spaceship, um, like tonally. I didn't want to make them too spaceshipy because I want to use them on other kill boards or kill zones as well. Uh, and then I gave them some like alien plant life, uh, which is a Vallejo um, tuft pack that I grabbed. And there it is, this is my half of the Galadark, plus the Galadark terrain, um, painted up this week. You can see the Let's Play, you can see my review of the actual Killzone Galadark, um, and the books as well, going up, uh, this should be up probably already, and this is going up after. And I did all, during all that, um, off the frames for the crude, you get enough stuff to do the uh, Tribalist as well, so I just need to find myself an extra crew body um, and like two more crew bodies and I have all the options for these guys. I just need enough for like a couple crew warriors. Uh, I could, I might actually paint up my old Angor proc to make the other um, kill broker because I have an old metal, a couple of old metal Angor procs and old games they crew to do it as the um, 
optional kill broker because there is actually i didn't realize it until way later there is actually a reason to take the pulse carbine over the pulse rifle um and the crew rifle too actually has a reason to do it so I can do my crew rifle one as Angler proc, uh, or just use these bits to convert up extra ones because you do actually get like an extra ritual blade and stuff. I just need to find a couple extra crew bodies, um, but I have all the specialist options already built. It's just the one extra, you only get one heavy no matter what, so just having the optional heavy on my list would be nice. Uh, and then I could use the extra bits to convert some older crew to look like newer crew. I'll use their heads. I really just need the bodies, actually. I have lots of arms and stuff too. So I gotta dig up a couple crew bodies, <laughs> and if I can find them, uh, I'm gonna go dig through my local store's bits box. I'll be able to do the last couple crew to um, to fill up my roster. I have a couple, an another crew warrior, two more options for my kill broker, and a uh, tribal S. Then I've got all, all the, all literally every possible configuration of crew. And it's a total of, this is 12 models, so it's a total of 16 models on the roster. I got my Rogue Trader, because these two are out today in the annual 2022. I really, so I gave Jay the Navy Breachers, because obviously, you know, his, it, it's his thing. Like, we, when we played um, Silver Bayonet, it just made sense for him to have the Breachers, so I wanted to paint something, some of those Navy Armsmen. So I'm gonna get the Voidsmen, uh, the Rogue Trader stuff, to kind of scratch that itch and paint these guys up. They're, they're actually not quite as good as the Breachers, but they're still super cool. And of course, um, Lucia Vane and her, uh, her Lucidian Star Striders. Uh, have some cool rules and then maybe do bad guys i do like the idea of the these guys being on the space hulk the um, the geller pox make a ton of sense being there and i mean who doesn't like playing with giant huge kill monsters so that'd be fun and then last but not least having played in the kill zone now i do think that the orc commandos um have a ton of legs in this kill zone because they have the breacher being able to run through walls in this is a big deal it's not quite as good as the hatch cutter is uh for the the navy breachers but it's still pretty super cool so there we go with 14 models, no, 12 models, and a ton of terrain painted up this week uh, for Into the Dark, and some cool projects I got planned coming up for playing that same kill zone. So you'll be able to see um, the next episode, obviously, of Into the Dark in two weeks. Until then, I'm Ash. Up for me. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching. It really does help out, and happy gaming.